Well, good afternoon again. So excited to see all of you here today. And um, we have a great, have had a great afternoon so far and I welcome all of you. Many of you were here just a year ago. As we sat in this room, we talked about some really exciting things. So I'm wondering in your own head, what do you remember from last year? What inspired you that day? Was it a statistic? Was it a, 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 a picture? Was it an image? If you're like me, I'm a visual thinker, and so I can remember a lot of the slides that we showed, and I can recall those images that we use to communicate where we've been, what we've accomplished so far, and yet where we still needed to grow. Like the politics of putting children first, my talk last year, had we needed to be that constant advocate for children to ensure access and benefits and coverage. Maybe you thought you were remembering, talking about the, how we were going to improve outcomes when we move away from the silos. This was Dr. Reamson's speech. And we have a more integrated approach to healthcare delivery. And of course, Stacy Jones delivered on research the life-saving power of teamwork in research and discovery. If you were here last year, I hope, we, I hope you took away something really valuable last year. And today, I hope you'll take away something else. I want to offer an expanded view today on the, what, what we look at on the horizon, looking beyond transitioning and transform, transforming healthcare delivery for the kids of Arkansas to actually transforming child health in Arkansas, a dual vision of sorts, two ways of thinking about the same problem. And some of you are probably thinking, what? How can we have two visions? How can we do this? Isn't that splitting our focus, splitting our attention? So play with me with just a minute. Look at the screen in front of you up there. Cover it with your right eye. OK, cover your left eye. Look at it with both eyes. If you have normal vision, are you seeing double now? No, right? Now, if you don't have normal vision, ignore my little trick there. Um, but as humans, we have binocular vision, right? So when we look in one eye and we look at the other, when we use both eyes, we can see a better picture. It's what enables us to th see things truly in depth. Each eye sees an object from a slightly different angle, and then we use our brain to process both of those sets of information to form a single image. And that's what we're going to try to do at Arkansas Children's with our double vision. A dual vision that is more in-depth, a more robust view. So today I'm going to ask you to follow along with that, to look at both visions for Arkansas Children to see what a, our whole picture a bit more deeply. So let's take a first to take a look at what's in the foreground. Healthcare delivery. That's what we all know. That's what we've been talking about for a while, right? For the last five years, we've been most focused on changing the delivery system because we know that the most effective way to deliver care is in communities where kids live and learn and play. Delivering care close to home cuts down that time between diagnosis and intervention. It reduces costs. It increases an appointment retention and follow-up. And most importantly, it makes wellness actually accessible to all. And of course, this progress that we've achieved did not happen in the blink of an eye. Beneath this simplified representation is a complex matrix of vision, of planning, of money, of talent, of sheer grit on the team. But in the most abstract, it's a relatively straightforward proposition, right? kind of easy to think about. Extend our delivery care into areas where we're not. Fill up all those empty spaces on the map. A worthy goal. And what we've accomplished absolutely should be celebrated. But it's also too easy to get stuck right here. Because it really is straightforward and very simple for everyone to grasp. So why don't we look beyond healthcare delivery to the second part of our vision, transforming child health itself. What does that even mean? You know, I mentioned I'm a visual thinker. My team knows I think in pictures. So let me try to use pictures to explain just a bit. We all know that two people can look at the exact same thing and see it very differently. So what if instead of dismissing the perceptions that differ from our own, we expressed curiosity about them? What if we let such differences expand our understanding of the world rather than dividing us? What would we gain? So let's take, for example, the life of Dr. Temple Grandin. Some of you may have heard of her. Temple was diagnosed as an autism, with autism as a child. 
and has applied her distinctly different perspective in the world to break through solutions, improving the welfare of both humans and animals on multiple fronts. Her life story has been told many times through film and television, through talks and print. But my favorite version of the story of Temple Grandin is the Mighty Girl series of children's books. Temple Grandin, the girl who thought in pictures. With charming illustrations and whimsical rhymes, this book tells the struggle of a child whom the world saw as difficult, simply because she saw the world differently. It follows Temple as she learns to appreciate what makes her special and uses her unique insight into animal behavior to actually revolutionize livestock practices. So if you'll allow me to share just a little, because we are a children's hospital, right? There's some great words in this book. And slowly but surely, she changed many minds until farm after farm built her awesome designs. Word spread about Temple, her feet's not so small. Temple Grandin? She's grand. She's the grandest of all. I mean, what a great way to celebrate someone who sees the world differently, who thinks differently, and then use that to change the world, to really bring a fresh approach to a, same, a common set of, of problems. I think that's what we could do, celebrate our differences, celebrate a different way of thinking to fundamentally change what we're about so that we can get beyond the problems that really are so familiar that they seem intractable in some times. If you've been at all engaged in our conversation with Children's Health in Arkansas, none of the following statements that I'm about to make will surprise you or be news to you. First. A child's zip code matters as much or more as the child's genetic code when predicting health. Second, Arkansas ranks in the bottom 10 in our country with respect to infant mortality. Finally, we have a child abuse epidemic in the state of Arkansas. And when we use academic phrases like social determinants, it's really easy to become desensitized. So why don't we take a page from Temple Grandin's book and her life someone who sees things in pictures and words. And rather than simply just the words, let's look at these same statements with pictures and words. On the subject of environment, here are the words. Zip code matters as much or more as a child's genetic code when predicting health. It's a pretty thought-provoking thing, isn't it? But does it land differently when you look at this picture? This is the Del Mar Divide. Some of you may have heard of this. My daughter Katie lives in St. Louis today, steps away from Del Mar Boulevard. Del Mar cuts straight through the city of St. Louis, right in the middle, separating a largely white community to the south from a, a mostly black community to the north. It's not just a dramatic demographic divide. We know from a research conducted by a Harvard-based researcher, it's also a huge health divide. Below Del Mar, healthy people are living longer with convenient access to nutritional food and healthcare providers and hospitals, you name it. But above the Del Mar Divide, there are fewer healthy people, fewer hospitals, higher rates of key health indicators like heart disease and infant mortality. In fact, to put it really succinctly, a child who happens to be born here, north of Del Mar, has an average life expectancy of 10 years less than a child born south of Del Mar Boulevard. And while we don't have an exact parallel study in Arkansas, it doesn't take a leap of imagination to extrapolate these same facts to, and findings to our state. On the subject of infant mortality, here are the words. Infant mortality in Arkansas is among the nation's worst. We've heard that a couple of times today already. So let me show you some pictures. These might startle you. There are counties in Arkansas that have the same infant mortality rate as war-torn Libya. And as a state, we have the same infant mortality as Lebanon, a country plagued by political violence. On the subject of child abuse, the words are also pretty clear. One in four girls and one in five boys in Arkansas will be sexually abused by the time they're 18. Now here's a picture. Why would we be okay with any child in Arkansas experience, experiencing sexual abuse, let alone contemplating which two of these children should have to suffer from that abuse? These aren't just statistics. 
These are real children. We're talking about a systemic issues affecting real kids in real time across the state of Arkansas. And as difficult as it is to imagine the Del Mar Divide or infant mortality rate like Libya or Lebanon and the abuse of our children, I actually know we are up to the task of tackling these life-threatening issues. I showed you earlier the progress we've made in blanketing the state. And last year, I talked about the politics of putting children first. And thanks to many of you in this room, we've actually had some big wins in advocacy. Congress reauthorized CHIP, the Children's Health Insurance Program. The Advancing Care for Exceptional Kids, also known as the ACE Kids Act, is actually moving through the House of Representatives in DC. Funding was also extended for our Children's Hospitals Graduate Med Medical Education Program, dollars that help us fund residents and fellows. And funding was extended for the Maternal and Child Health Bureau, which helps fund our home visiting program. These milestones are really important and should be celebrated. But as Stacy said, clinical care only accounts for 20% of the overall social determinants that predict the outcomes of a child's health. If we only focus on our hospitals and clinics, what does that mean for the children who will never walk through our doors, who won't seek our services? Here's where that dual vision becomes an imperative. Our mission doesn't stop with providing a single point of delivery, however excellent we might be. Nor does it stop with extending healthcare delivery out across that state, blanketing the state as we've made great strides in doing. Many kids, making kids better today and healthier tomorrow has got to be more than our slogan. It has to be our way forward in the state of Arkansas. And I think then it starts with that shift in perspective, a fundamental difference in how we think. We must focus on the health of children who never walk through our doors as often as we do focus on the health of children who re repeatedly walk through our doors. I specifically wanted you to hear about the Nursery Alliance and the Medical Legal Partnership today because these are excellent examples of how we are addressing social determinants of health right here in Arkansas. So where else do we go? Because that's not enough. You are among our closest friends and our strongest advocates for children. The shift in perspective must start here. We don't have all those solutions, but the partnerships represented here today are the kind of strategic partnerships we need to truly impact children's health in Arkansas. As we focus on moving the needle on children's health, we have a few very specific pieces of the puzzle we intend to focus on moving forward. Continuing deliver, to deliver clinical excellence, of course. But alongside that, decreasing infant mortality, developing health, healthy neighborhood strategies, developing a child abuse prevention program, advancing a food security approach, and convening partners focused on behavioral health. Now is the time we work to both transform healthcare delivery on one hand and child health on the other, and we do so simultaneously. So today I challenge you to think about partners who could be valuable in this work. Who are they? Who's not in this room? Is it someone we have yet to work with? We need your ideas on that. And I also challenge you to shift your own perspective, to really think differently. How do we approach children's health, and how do we support children's health differently tomorrow than we do so today. By combining our insights, we have the ability to see deeper, to really dream bigger, to reach farther than we ever had. And I think together then, those of us in, those, in this room and the partners we have yet to identify can fundamentally transform the health of children in the state. Together we can make this a safer, healthier place to be a child. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for being a champion for children. Thank you.